Pants are stuck. Uh, How's your week going, Maddie? Oh, it's going good. Today, yeah. Or this week was uh, quite amazing. Appreciate. How much you make? Um, doing the tally right now, but it looks like it's about ten G's. That's your average, man. Why are you so average? I just, I mean, I'm not. I'm just trading scared, honestly. I'm mocking you. Ten grand a week <laughs> is awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. That's fantastic. Um, I bitched out. I started a big account too. I can't just trade with a small account. <laughs> you did? I did. <laughs> I, so listen, I'm still trading with a small account. My 12,000 has grown to 14,000 in a month. Um, with, That's good. I've had margin calls. I've had pattern day trader restrictions. My E-Trade account is like, there's a, a free riding regulation, which I never even heard of. What the so, hell is that? Yeah, I learned a lot. Uh, Google it, free riding. I don't know. Uh, I've heard but, of joy riding. But the problem was, you know, I also have a lot of students with big accounts and they were feeling left out. So I have two accounts. I say in the alert, you know, this is for my big account. This is for my small account. Um, and I oh, think Tim, when yeah. will you just stick? 12,000, one year, go. I can't ignore half my students, you know? Like maybe like three eighths of my students have big accounts and they're like, yo, we're not under the pattern day trader rule. Give us alerts. We need action. Feed us. We're degenerates. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, degenerates, I will give you some toppings on your pizza because I know, you know, plain pizza is sometimes boring. So yeah. those people need to calm down. I think you I'm, treat not, I'm not giving like way more alerts. It's just, right. you know, I was, the problem was I was giving these alerts. I was like, well, I would be buying the stock if I could, if I wasn't restricted, I would be shorting this. And that's cool because then, you know, you get the time stamped of like what you say would happen, but then you're cut out of the education because then you don't see what I would do if the trade, you know, would go my way or if it wasn't. So it was an incomplete education for people with big accounts. Last year you started with what, 30? Five hundred thousand. Oh, okay. I thought no, took- no. Wait, wait, wait. Last last year I started smaller. Last year I started I thought- with a hundred thousand. Oh, okay. And no, I, I thought for some money. reason you started with like thirty. That thirty know. would be a good number. I mean, I go. I every year it's different. I I, I try and judge. You know what's going to be best for my students. So I don't know. There's no right answer. But you know when I when I can't give alerts, that's a problem. Like when I can't do a trade. So interesting. I don't know. But, you know, you're making 10 grand a week, so what do you care? (laughs) For now, yeah. (laughs) What do you see happening in the next next month? Oh. We came on here with our January predictions. I said down negative 5 to negative 10%. Nailed it. You said that you think that we're going to be okay. But then you tweeted a chart that said we're not going to be okay, so you were kind of right, too. Yeah. I um, make money every week, more importantly. Right now, like the market is testing what I thought it would, which is like 1930. And uh, if it fails this area and doesn't reclaim this area, we will make another leg down. If we if we pass this certain area, we could rotate all the way back up. So can't really say we'll be down or up by a certain percentile. But so your is- prediction is we either go up or we go down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but what I'm saying is that this is a pivotal. Oh, no, that's moment. fantastic! I like simple. Matt yeah. says we either go up or we go down. It's okay, just, I will mark this into my calendar. It's a pivotal moment for. When the do you think we're going to go up by, or when do you think we're going to go down by? Do we have any deadlines, or is it just up no, or down in the next month? I'm serious. Two? Like right now, right now at 4:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday, January whatever it is, 29th. We are at a watershed moment for the market. If the market can post this until next week. That's okay. <laughs> I'm just saying that this is a watershed moment. So fair enough. I like where your head's at. I like where your hair's at. <laughs> um, anyways, it was a crazy week. You know, thank you again to Michael Good and Ivan uh, for coming on the Steve Harvey show with me. Matt, I'm sorry you're too young for the Steve Harvey show, but you know, if Nickelodeon calls, we're gonna have you on <laughs> and you know, you and, and Dora the Explorer, I don't even know what a Nickelodeon show is these days. What's oh, on Nick? Do they still have Nick at night? I think so, yeah. I don't know. I, it's been a while since I've had time to watch TV. Let's get to a question. Uh, all right. We've got 
a question from Davey in California. And Davey says, in broken English, let me try and translate this. <laughs> I'm sorry, Davey, but, you know. Um, uh, Why don't you just go on to another question? No, this is a good question. So he's saying in, in a volatile market, uh, you know, what should he be concentrating on? Should he be concentrating on sectors or volatility? Like where, where are the plays? That's a good question. Oh, well, when volatility expands, usually prices, you can get a lot of good movement out of indexes, stocks, commodities. So there's almost too many plays and you just need to do your homework the night before and sit down and figure out what you want to trade because this these last four weeks the opportunities have been pretty much endless because volatility has been so crazy so when volatility expands you can expect prices to move drastically and you can make money on both sides so uh, you just have to narrow it down and focus on a couple of things that would be my best advice you can't just say uh, that I'm just gonna focus on these things when volatility is going crazy so I agree. So I'll make the analogy that this is like a seafood buffet in Vegas. And your waistline will expand because there's so many choices. But you have to focus on what is the best seafood. You know, go with the lobster tails, go with the king crab legs. Don't waste your time on, you know, cheesy dishes. Uh, you know, Alfredo, um, like they have like the seafood tacos and they put a lot of guac and sour cream on that. You need to focus on the best stuff for your money because if you guys have been to you know a vegas seafood buffet you only get so much of the really expensive stuff so if you think like a jew and you're like okay let me focus on this let me wait in line for the lobster there's usually a line for people waiting for the lobster right because that's like the most expensive stuff you pay one price for a seafood buffet so don't dare go to that mac and cheese because that mac and cheese is going to fill you up and you're not going to be able to eat enough lobster tails or shrimp or Alaskan king crab. So for me, I want to focus on the best place, if that analogy makes sense, which it does because that is dead on. That's such – guys, this is not scripted, I promise you. He's coming up with his stuff like on the Well, fly. when you said volatility expands, all I could think about was like a waistline expanding. Uh, it's a good but that analogy works. If you're trying to get the maximum bang for your buck at a buffet, you gotta you gotta prioritize, you gotta strategize. It's no different in trading, whether you're trading futures or whatever. There's it's a buffet. Every day there's 10, 20, 30 choices, long, short, high price stocks, low price stocks. And the vast majority of people lose. You know, the reason why buffets make money, especially you could you could say this with, you know, Fogo de Chow or any steakhouse that has the buffets, and people fill up. You know, if you go to Fogo de Chao, the salad bar is actually amazing. Have you ever been there, Maddie? I've never been there. So, do you know what Fogo de Chao the concept is? No. It's a churros Korea. So you get like a little card. It's either green or red. So you, you put this card on your table. If you want them to bring you steaks, you have green. If, if you're tired of too much steak, you, you put it to red. But they so, keep bringing. They have like 18 different kinds or 20 different kinds of meat. So you can oh get like filet, like ribeye lamb chicken all this stuff and it's amazing but if you want to maximize your value you cannot be tempted by the salad bar but they make the salad bar delicious so that you fill up on the cheap stuff like the baby corn and like the little appetizers so that you don't eat the expensive meats wow have to so check that place out the stock market is the same exact way where you're tempted by all this amazing salad bar all this amazing creamy mac and cheese, Alfredo, and, and sour cream, and that's going to weigh you down. You need to be choosy so that you can stick with the best prime cuts and the best seafood. That is, if you like the best. You know, some of us are just like white trash, and, and we don't like, you know, the, the most expensive stuff. For me, I look at the stock market like a Jew, and we want the best stuff. We want the best plays, and we talk like this because we're, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> this analogy works, though. I, I'm, I'm, Trying to make it work, but I think it works. It works. You're good. 
That was your question. Um, second question. Uh, let's see. We took your question and boiled it down to yeah. food. <laughs> this is another, we're going to try and make all food analogies coming up here. So this is from Stephanie in Massachusetts. It's good to have a female trader and, and viewer. And Stephanie asks, uh, you guys both have a lot of teaching experience now too. What is the number one mistake that you see students make? Good, good question, Stephanie. What do you think, Matt? The number one mistake I think is people think about trading as easy. They come with unrealistic expectations and they don't take the time to do their education to actually study and then keep a journal on themselves. I think it's there's an idea of you know people believe that the market is easy they'll be multi-millionaires in six months to a year and the truth is is when they get in the game they often figure out that that is not the case so number one mistake is believing that it's easy and not dedicating themselves enough to learning and i cannot stress that enough i mean i've been hurt very badly i used to rely on tim or superman to feed me every day because i was just being lazy but and then you became a chef yourself. There we go. Iron chef. <laughs> and, a hunter, and a gatherer. And now exactly. you hunt, you gather, and you eat. Yeah. And just understand, like, it's not going to be easy, and you're going to have to put a lot of time and effort into it. And it's not something that you can just do passively. You either have passion for it, and you love it, or you choose something different. That's it. So answering your question, Stephanie, in the form of a buffet – um, I think it comes down to strategy. You know, Red Lobster is another example where my dad and I were very big fans when I was growing up where they would have endless King Crab Tuesdays. Um, they had some corny name for it. But as Jews, we just heard the value. And I wasn't rich growing up. And so we wanted to, you know, get the most King Crab legs. Going with what Matt said, everyone goes to Red Lobster thinking, oh, it's going to be delicious. It's going to be amazing. But they fill you up on their delicious cheesy bread. Again, the cheese weighs you down. So don't eat the cheesy bread. And what we did was we strategized. We got there right when the restaurant opened. I think it was like 5.30 p.m. We had quickly, we said no cheesy bread, no salad, no more of that junk. We focused right on the king crab legs. We ate as much as we can from like 5.30 to 6.30. We got, I don't know, like four or five rounds, right? Then when they tried to give us the check, we said, no, 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 no. And we talked. We had a good you know, father, son, heart to heart. And we kept talking. And for the next hour or so, you know, we stopped talking. It was kind of boring. But we had to let the food digest. And then we ordered again. So we were there really from like 5.30 until like 9 p.m. But we had like 10 or 12 rounds. We crushed that value, okay? We used it. We maximized the opportunity. It was because we went in with a strategy. We weren't like all these other people who go to Red Lobster and they're like, oh, I cheesy bread. Oh, I'll take a few crab legs. Red Lobster used to make a lot of money off people who didn't strategize. Remember, 90 to 95% of traders lose money. It's because of the lack of strategy. So even if you go to Red Lobster and for some reason, you know, you can't get all the king crab legs like they run out or maybe they're not good or maybe you're full like you didn't have – like you didn't strategize – this analogy works. It does. Still talking about food. It, it works. Listen. So maybe your strategy is off, but it's aim small, miss small. You know, if you're not feeling it, you pay the bill, you take the loss, you cut your losses. Endless King Crab Night, I think was like 20 bucks or maybe 30 bucks a person. It's a small loss. You move on. You strategize. You wait for the next buffet night. Or now, you know, you have the church careers that are there all the time. But you go in with a strategy. And if you don't stick to the plan for whatever reason, you exit, you stay disciplined. And this is the number one problem that I see with traders and students. They don't have a plan. And even if they do have a plan, they don't stick to it. You know, If you say that your risk is 12 cents a share and you think that you can make like 50 cents a share and then you're down like 15, 20 cents a share or 25 cents a share, you're not sticking to your plan. And then what happens is a lot of traders double up. And they try and get back to being only down 12 cents a share. And they're like, well, I'm still within the plan. No, you just broke the fucking plan. <laughs> so you broke it. You can't break the plan. You can't change the plan after you make the plan. You know, if you ever watch any of these great movies about criminals, 
every dumb criminal. They change the plan. Like they're they're so stupid. Like I, I just want to see a criminal movie where the criminals like get away and they're smart and they stick to their original plan. But they're all emotional. They're all idiots. First of all, you know why are you breaking the law to make money? There's so many legal ways to make money. You're an idiot if you break the law. But secondly, stick to the motherfucking plan. <laughs> Don't be like Point Break. Or the remake. Which, or the remake, which yeah, should have never happened. Really but okay. <laughs> did that second analogy make sense? It did. Boiling trading down to nothing but food. I love it. Boiling it down to boiled seafood. There we go. Let's see. We have a third question. This is from, I can't pronounce this, Elric? Uric? Elric? I don't know. Some, some guy named Elric from Switzerland. It's cool that we have international people. Um, and he is saying uh, ooh, another broken English. One sec. Let me just. <laughs> I probably should have edited this. Before. Yeah. But this is answer stock. It's raw, like the raw oyster bar. Yeah. Um, Elric basically says he's good with uh, lots of quick hits and, and small gains. How does he take it to the next level for bigger games? Good question. I think, honestly, that comes down to your psychology as a trader. If you're going in and out of a trade that generally demonstrates, even if you're profitable, that you're trading scared, which is okay. But if you want to take it up a notch, you need to think about things much a little bit longer term and why you think that way. So you can't just, you know, if you're taking quick hits and you're making money, that's okay. But is generally, I, I think that comes more from fear uh, of, of losing money. So you're cutting your winners FOMO. short and you're cutting your... FOMO. Hmm? FOMO, fear of missing out. Yeah, FOMO. And so if you want to take that up to the next level, you have to have a more, I would say, not a longer term plan. I'm not talking about like weeks or months. I'm just saying, you know, maybe a little bit longer time horizon based on the daily or weekly breakout of a chart. So that way you're trading a little bit longer and not just trading, you know, a one minute, one tick chart. So it really comes down to the way that you think about the market and you'd have to change the way you think in order to progress past that. Okay. So for me, this is like bringing a little toddler to a buffet. Like <laughs> you can't expect the toddler to eat, you know, 50 crab legs, or like 20 steaks right away. The toddler is gonna start small. It's like a little small child, you know, feed him or her, I don't know, a few crab legs, a few steaks. They're growing up. You don't wanna have like any, you don't wanna create any kinds of like fear of like overeating or undereating. You don't want like any, any diseases or anything. It's very similar with trading. You, as somebody with a thousand or two thousand or five thousand dollars, you can't be trying to make a million dollars right away. You shouldn't be using leverage. You shouldn't be going all in. You start small. Aim small, miss small. Like Mel Gibson in The Patriot, if you want to use that analogy too. You know, the American guerrilla fighters, they're hiding behind trees. They're picking off the red coats in the open field like the idiots that they are. The war of attrition. You know, it's no wonder that they win. So if you hide behind trees as you eat crab legs and you take the crab legs or the British army one at a time, I'm going a little crazy with my my uh, my analogies. I'm a little loopy today. I That's okay. You stuck to the plan, though. Contact me in the last day or so. I'm trying to respond to some of them. That's a crazy amount of people. It is. It is. So that's why I'm I'm absolutely insane, and I'm thinking about the phase because I'm I'm starving really. But you know, start small, okay? If you have a small account, you know, Tim Gratani going from a few thousand to a few million. I went from a few thousand to a few million. Now you see like Maddie crazy hair whiz kid going from, you know, six figures because he started bigger like his hair and now he's over a million. But we are outliers, okay? None of us tried to go from point A to point B. We didn't know where it would go. So if you have a small account, what I find, you'll have a lot of success if you aim small and miss small. And you'll see that, you know, if you have, let's say, a $5,000 account and you bet, I don't know, 2000 and you try and make 200 okay? So you're trying to make 10% on your $2,000 position. So let's say you, you, you know, you're not always going to capture all your plans. So let's say you make 100 So now instead of 5000 you have 5100 
and so on and so on. Sometimes you're going to lose. But if you can grow that $5,000 account to 10000 over, let's say, I don't know, a few months or maybe even a year, that same knowledge base that takes you from five to 10000 is going to help you go from ten to twenty. And it's all still, you know, small money compared to like what a part-time Starbucks barista makes. But that same kind of lessons that took you from five to twenty is going to take you from twenty to eighty, and then eighty to three twenty, and then three twenty to one hundred and one point two million. So it's it's weird to try and make a little bit. I know it's frustrating because you know you're, you're spending so much time on research, or you know you're spending so much time at this restaurant. But if you start small, okay, you start with a few crab legs. You start with a small trading account you build up over time there's always going to be all you can eat buffets there's always going to be entire stock markets for you to conquer if you have the right strategy and the right mindset don't try and do it all at once because there's a lot of fat people at buffets and they have heart attacks and they die and we don't want that happening to your trading account are you getting the analogy there okay don't let your trading account have a heart attack by getting too obese too quickly you want to control it, you know. Have your buffet, then maybe go out and do some cardio. Have another buffet, do another cardio. That way, if you look at like the the world champion eating people, you know, who eat these Nathan's hot dogs, you know, they're not the biggest fat guys. Joey Chestnut is jacked. You know, Joey Chestnut. No, I've never watched a hot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Joey Chestnut won for like several years in a row and he's he's like ripped he was like training like people were training to be these professional eaters and it's so unhealthy I, I don't encourage anybody to do that but the way that he could eat the most is not by being the fattest and it's the same way in the stock market the way to make the most is not necessarily trading the most and being the most aggressive it's to, to go in with a very specific strategy be like a sniper be like Joey Chestnut and train and you know aim small and over time you will develop skills you learn about yourself you evolve uh and and you know then maybe you'll be a, a millionaire like maddie too exactly and even if you have a, a lot of money to dedicate to trading you should cut that in force or fists and start trading much much smaller that was my it's not about mistake. the money that you make at first it's about developing good habits you know, whether you make 500 or 5,000 or even 50,000, it's all small money in the real world. So what you're trying to do is develop good habits that will ideally help you grow your accounts exponentially and then put you in a mind place, mind spot. I don't even know what I'm saying. A mindset where you finally, you, you know, can make serious money. If you're trading with 500,000 or a million, you know, then you can consistently make 500,000 or a million a year. And that's, you know, not part-time Starbucks barista money. That's some serious money. But you need to get to that place. You're not going to make 500 grand off five grand unless there's like a marijuana penny stock craze, which doesn't seem to be happening right now. So you need to build your accounts up. You need to build yourself up and in your own discipline up before you can get to the big leagues. Amen. Thank you. This has been another Answer Stock. Send an email to admin at timothysykes.com. And I promise I will not be so loopy next week as I have no TV shows scheduled. And hopefully I will devour this list of emails like an 18-course steak dinner tonight. Exactly. Peace. My name is Tim Sykes, and I teach people to trade stocks. I am a self-made multimillionaire. So this is the ideal trade that I'm going to talk about. I want you guys to understand every single aspect of this trade. 